P-O-S-T! P-O-S-T, Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, we've got two exciting things to tell you about today. First, there's Post Cereals. I'm proud to stake my reputation on them because I know we can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. So as a favor to me, get your mom to put Post Cereals on the shelf and try them, will you? The second exciting thing is that our old prospecting friend, Murray Bolin, is feeling a lot better. Dale rode up to the mining camp to see him uh, just a couple of hours ago. Murray, I'll give you the good news right away. The doctor said you're so much better you can be moved. Moved? Yes, sir, down to Mineral City. You can stay at the Eureka until you're completely well, and you'll be right near the doctor's office. He can give you all the attention you need. Yes. The only thing, Dale, I got quite a lot of money hid here. Gold. My life savings. Oh, can't your two partners look after it for a few weeks? Yeah, I suppose, but, well, I, I'm not saying anything against Johnny and Tom, mind you, but we ain't been partners long, and... Oh, well, I... let's not worry about that. Roy Rogers will be up here to help you get moved. You just tell him about your gold, and he'll know what to do. Oh, I mustn't forget to go over to the claim and give them a report on your health. The doctor said he always did, and that I should, too. Well, howdy, Dale. Well, hard at work, eh, Tom? Is old Murray much worse? Tell us the truth, what the doc really said. Tom, he's well enough to be moved. Roy Rogers will be up this afternoon and take him on into town. Well, that's fine, Dale. Glad to hear he's really better. John and I thought he was worse. We were afraid Murray might die. <laughs> I saw you talking to Dale Evans, Tom. Did she say... Murray's anything? getting well. He... He's well? Doc's having to move to town this afternoon. He's not going to die, then? Yes, he is. Murray's going to die this morning. But we still got a chance to see that he does. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, Tom. It's nothing I want to do. We're safe. We got everything worked out. Glad you come back, Tom, Johnny. Dale Evans is here. She told me... We heard what Dale said. Close the door, John. All right, sure. Yeah, I'm moving to town. You're going to stay at the hotel. Now, hand me that pillow off my bunk. I... Yeah, Tom. Uh, doctor told Dale in another three weeks I'll be... Uh, what you doing, Tom? Come on, John, come on. Uh, Tom, I wish we didn't have to... Oh, here, take it. Yeah, I, I don't want a pillow, boy. You know that. Your pillow keeps me a bit. Johnny. It's, um... Wait, wait a minute. John, Please. hold him while I work this. No. No. You, you last go to the No. No. Hold him down there. Hold him. No. Hold him, Johnny. No. You want my gold? Keep him down. Keep him down. I'll put a curse on the gold. I'll put a curse on it. And whoever touches my gold after I'm dead... Dying terror. He's that shit. Hold his shoulders. I'll take care of that pillow. Well, job's done. He put a curse on the gold. He said whoever Let's touches Let's go back it... to the claim. When Roy Rogers gets here, we want him to find us working. We can say we don't know about Bill dying. Better not touch that gold yet either, in case suspicion should fall our way. <laughs> Late in the afternoon, Roy Rogers arrives at the miner's cabin. Dale and Jonah are with him. The air is strangely quiet. 
A heavy stillness hangs over the miners' dilapidated shack. They get off their horses, walk toward the cabin. No breeze blows, no birds sing. It's as though these three men are the only living things in this wilderness. Roy knocks at the cabin door. Nobody answers. I guess we'd better just walk in. Old Murray's probably sleeping. Yeah, well, nobody ever give me this much attention when I was sick. When were you sick, Jonah? Why, all during my army career, whenever they wanted to send me into the front lines. Yeah. Old Murray's sleeping. What? Hmm? Oh, Roy. I'm afraid it's a mighty deep sleep, too. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Roy. What do you think we'd better do? It's so late. We'd better wait until his two partners get home and then see what we can do to help them. The two killers have waited at their claim all afternoon. Each passing hour adds to the strain. Now the sun is sinking below the horizon. Dark shadows spread over the wasteland. And yet no one, as far as the killers know, has learned that Murray is dead. Roger should have been here long before this. He may have gone to the cabin and found out Murray was dead and left without looking for us. Ah, you wouldn't have done that. Be bound to tell us. It's dark now, Tom. I wish he'd get here. We can't take the old man's gold until everybody agrees he died natural. If they figure he was killed, we can show him the gold. They know there was no reason for us to do it as long as we didn't rob him. What if Rogers doesn't come until tomorrow? And Murray's in the cabin all night. Uh, well, come on, let's go. Not to the cabin. Yeah, we won't light any lights. Just climb into our bunks and stay there. If Rogers rides up late, we can claim Murray must have died while we was asleep. The two killers walk toward their cabin, watching every shadow, every stone, lest someone ride up unexpectedly, and they be taken off guard. Roy, Dale, and Jonah have remained in the cabin, waiting, growing uneasy. Tom Hill and John Kennedy are certainly working late. Yeah, maybe we should have gone out and told them. But I don't like the looks of things here. I want to see them when they walk in. You know, it's funny they'd leave a sick man alone all this time, without even looking in on him. Yeah, well, now, I don't know about that. What do you mean, Jonah? Why, I remember the time that Corporal John Dumphy went off and left me when I was sick. Yeah, that was during my army years, of course. You see, I was during my army years. <laughs> uh, I told you folks I fit in nine, ten wars, didn't I? Oh, I thought it was six or seven. Well, well, it was, it was. But that's not counting the war against the Eskimos. Now, there was a real Cold War. See, there was a real Cold War. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the Bean Pod War. The Bean Pod War? What was that? Oh, well, now, not many people have heard of it. Happened on the Saginapolis Islands. It is, a, well, sort of a private war. As a matter of fact, Washington didn't even know about it. Till one day, an office holder went looking in the barrel for a, enough tax money to get himself a gold-lettered shaving mug <laughs> and found most of it was gone. Oh, brother. Yeah, yeah, the Bean Pod War was a, well, it was sort of a grudge fight carried on by General Thomas Kenneth Rowe against the Saginapolis Islanders at the time they flooded this country with pennies that was heads on both sides. <laughs> Whoa, there now, Oh, John. the general was a great penny matcher, you see. And he lost 300 muskets, 175 sabers, and a collapsible canvas water pail to a feller before he caught on that that feller was a plane with a two-headed penny. The feller was from the Saginapolis Islands. So the general said all them people was unfitting to live. Why not? Listen, you know why. It's Tom Hill and John Kennedy, Roy, Murray's partners. Murray put a curse on his gold, that's why. Hey, and we better have some light. No, listen. Nobody can put a curse on anything. Forget it. Hey, Roy, they already know about Murray dying. We got enough worries with Lappin and his crowd demanding money from us. We can't afford to be superstitious. Hey, something's wrong here. Duck under this table and keep out of sight. We may have run into trouble we didn't expect. Turn yeah. near, knock them dishes off the table. Quiet. Yeah, we'll ought to put things away, not leave them laying out on the table. That was my fault. I washed their dishes when I was here this morning, and I wasn't sure where they belonged. Tom. Somebody's in here. Oh, we're all right. Let's light a lamp. Have Rogers ride up and surprise us, maybe? No, sir. Come on. We'll make sure Murray's gold is still in his mattress. If somebody steals it, we can pay our debt to Lavin. He finishes offshore. Yeah, I know that. Now, let's have a look. If the tear in the mattress is still sold, Tom, let it alone. We'll know the money's still there. Oh, what the... Look out! Tom, I knew somebody was in here. Hold it. Don't move. Don't say a word. If they're here, they'll get us. Shut up. What was it, Tom? What happened? Well, one of us must have knocked something off the table without realizing it. Let's go out and get a breath of air. We need it after this strain. 
Come on. We'll be all right in a minute. Roy watches as the two men go out of the cabin. He, Dale, and Jonah all know the men are aware of Murray's death. No one mentions the trouble Jonah nearly caused when he knocked the dishes from the table. Roy sees the two partners stop some distance from the cabin. He sees but cannot hear them talking outside. In a few moments, they seem to have reached a decision. The shadowy figures again walk toward the cabin. Dale, Jonah, they're coming back. We'll wait right where we are. The next few minutes ought to tell us a lot about Murray Bolin and the way he died. <laughs> How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about grape nuts flakes? Yep. How about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hands advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. How about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. The first and only cereals ever guaranteed fresh. Roy, Dale, and Jonah, waiting in Murray Boland's cabin, grip their guns tightly. Murray's two partners, Tom Hill and John Kennedy, are coming back. They walk toward the door. Warily, slowly, for the night is dark, and they have at least a suspicion that someone might be inside. They step through the doorway. It's even darker inside. Uh, just a second, Johnny. Wait here. Yeah. You hear anything? I thought I did, but... No, I guess not. Well, yeah, it seems all right. Never try it, that gold. All right, but I don't think it's a good I, idea. I could reach out and grab the barber, Troy. Not yet. Be careful, they'll hear us. Murray well, ripped the mattress on this side when he hid the gold, didn't he? Yeah, but if it's still sewed up, you're not going to open it, are you, Tom? Sure I am. But that'll look bad. If anybody's found out about Murray dying and sees the gold line We're like that... doing more than opening that mattress, John. We're taking that money. Oh, wait now. Murray put a curse on his gold. As he died, I'm he said... I'm more afraid of Dick Lappin than I am of a dead man's curses. But what if the curse works? Murray said that... John, anybody... listen to me. Didn't want to say anything. I know you're uneasy. But somebody's been here. No. Yes, they have. We better take him, Roy. Quiet. There's two or three people on horses. That uh, means somebody knows Murray's dead. I figure the best thing we can do is take this gold and run for it. If we run, the law will suspect us. I'll take my chances with the law before I'll risk going against Lappin. But if the law gets us, we'll be tried for murder. And in this state, Tom, the curse is working. Murray's curse is working. Shut up and get hold of yourself. We're in this. we got to get out of it. Okay, here's Murray's gold. Let's start moving. Fast but easy. Roy. Roy, we ain't just gonna let him walk away. They robbed a dead man. If we wait, we may be able to get him for more than robbery. Oh, come on, Roy. A bird in the hand gathers no moss. Let's go. Hold it now. Let's use our heads. Johnny and Tom are mixed up with Dick Lappin some way. Jonah, you and I will head over to Lappin's place. Be waiting for him in case they show up there. I'll go with you, Roy. No, I want you to ride back to the ranch. Get Bullet and bring him back here. Put him on the trail of these two rattlers. But why? So if they don't go to Lappin's, we'll know where they did go. Oh, sure. But mind you, Dale, don't get close to them. Just find out where they go and hold everything until you hear from Jonah and me. Okay. Jonah, we'd better cut across country and forget the road. That'll get us there ahead of Johnny and Tom. Easy here, fella. Ho, ho, Titus, boy. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Yeah. Lappin's place is as dark as the inside of your pistol pocket, boy. Yeah, they black it out at night. So strangers don't accidentally wander in expecting to buy something. Yeah. Yeah, if I'd known we was coming to a place like this, I'd have brought my saber instead of just guns. I'll leave the horses here. Follow me. Roy and Jonah walk toward a large, rambling, store-like building. To all outward appearance, the store is empty. Yet Roy knows it's filled with gamblers, owl hoots, gunmen, men outside the law. 
for those are the men to whom Dick Lappin caters. He and Jonah halt before the door. Roy knocks. Using the code, he's heard is recognized by Lappin's gang. I've never been inside, Jonah, so have a quick look around when the door's open. Yeah, make a survey of the circumference, you mean. The door is open. A hulking, battered brute of a man confronts Roy and Jonah. Yeah, what do you want? I'm looking for Dick Lappin. Roy glances behind the guard down a long passageway. A streak of light is coming from beneath the door at the far end. Well, what business you got with Mr... Hey, you're Roy Rogers. Now watch it, Roy. Watch it. He's going to give us away. No, he's not. If you got him, Roy, but I could have done it better with a saber. Well, he'll stay asleep for a while. The main room must be on down at the end of the hall. <laughs> Roy and Jonah walk along the hall, apprehensive, careful. They come to the door at the far end. Roy flings it open. For a split second, he and Jonah stand, facing the lighted room. Hard-faced gunmen, outlaws who gather here to gamble, to make plans, to hide out from the law, look up at them. Roy and Jonah step into the room. Hey, Lappin, I'd like to see you. Go on, Rogers. A powerfully built giant turns to face Roy and Jonah. The gunman becomes silent. They watch suspiciously as Lappin shuffles toward the newcomers. Hey, Roy, now I'm beginning to wish I'd have brought both sabers. Harry, go ask Ken how two outsiders got past him at the front door. Your guard won't be able to answer questions for quite a while, Lappin. What do you want, Rogers? I'm checking on a couple of rattlers, Tom Hill and Johnny Kennedy. They're headed this way. Never heard of them. What makes you think they're coming here? They owe you some money. When they pay, they may let slip that they kill their partner. If they do, I want to be here. Rogers, I don't use this as a place to trap my friends. If you've got anything, that's it, Ken. Take a fire. A gun crashes on Roy's head. Ken, the doorkeeper, recovering fast, sneaked up behind Roy and Jonah. Roy is staggered by the blow, but only for a moment. He starts back. That one is moving in. Roy swings at him. Jonah draws his gun. The outlaws come on Jonah. One grabs his gun, knocking his hand upward. Shot goes into the ceiling. The others start after Jonah. Lappin and Roy have tanked, battling like two giants. An outlaw sends Jonah sprawling. Now the others are free to go to Lappin's aid. They converge on Roy from all sides. He tries to move so that his back will be to the wall. Too late. A dozen men close in, swinging, kicking. Roy goes down. That's all. We got him. Thanks, boys. We'll put him in our special office, under the floor, until after we've spurred a Tom Hill and John Kennedy out of the territory. Yeah, I, I come back all right, didn't I, Mr. Lappin? It was me that started all this, you know. Uh, don't go away, Ken. Yeah, I done good, though, didn't I? They hurt me, but I come too real fast and started all this. Take him up, boys. Get him to the office and back. Two of Lappin's men raise Jonah from the floor. Two others lift Roy. Is Roy still unconscious, or is he pretending, waiting for a chance to fight again? The outlaws move toward the back room, a small office only dimly lighted and sparsely furnished. In one corner, an iron plate covers the floor. No, it's not an iron plate. It's a metal door leading to a cell of some kind built beneath the floor. Lappin takes a key from his pocket, then bends down, inserts it, and turns the lock. He raises the heavy metal door. He holds it open. Yeah, give them to me. I want to do this myself. I've always had a yen to take care of, Rogers. Well, I'd like to throw one of them down, Mr. Yeah. Lappin. What's that? Oh, just a dog barking. The dog's inside. I must have left the front door open. All right, look out. My what, dog, what do you my mean, dog. dog. Take a bullet. Roy is suddenly lift to his feet, calling the bullet. Bullet charges forward, seeing his master and Jonah in trouble. His teeth gleam. Low snarls come from his throat. Get him, bullet. Get him, boy. Roy. Boy, are you all right? Keep back, Dale. Come on, Jonah. This is our chance to clean up. Bullet leaps at the outlaws, ready to give his life to protect Roy. The outlaws fall back. Again and again, Bullet leaps at them. Roy and Jonah go after them, too. The outlaws have had enough. Even a laughing. Call him off. Call him off before he kills us, Rogers. Bullet. Bullet. That's enough, fella. Hold it, Bullet. Oh, boy. Roy. I don't care how much steak is a pound. I'm going to buy that fellow all he can eat tomorrow morning. Bullet came directly here, Roy. He came inside. I just couldn't stop him. I'm sure glad he did. All right, Lappin. I want the key to that metal door on the floor. You can't do it. Give it here. All right, Rogers, take it. Thanks. 
Now you're going into the dungeon you've got below the floor. You can't do that. I'm me. locking you down there. Then I'm herding your men to the side room. And I want you to give orders for them to stay there. Because once you're locked up, Jonah's taking the key to the door and he's riding out of here with it and he's not coming back. No, sir. I, huh? Not coming back? I'm waiting here for Tom Hill and John Kennedy, Jonah. If there's any interference from Lappin's men, then Lappin stays in the dungeon from now on. But if they let me take those two rattlers, I'll send the key back. After Tom and Johnny are in the jail. Is that understood? Yeah, well, all right, but I don't want to do All right. Lappin, get moving. Jonah, you and Dale put your guns on these hombres until I get Lappin locked up. You'd better help him, Bullet. Say, if you Roy Rogers fans could visit the cookhouse at the Double R Bar Ranch, you know what you'd find? Stacks of that exciting new cereal sensation, Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, sir, it didn't take folks around the ranch long to discover what a perfect treat Post Sugar Crisp is. That's because it's fun to eat all day long. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. At breakfast time, that deliciously candy-coated puffed wheat tastes so wonderful with milk or cream. You don't need sugar. It's already sweet. At snack time, Post Sugar Crisp is perfect, too either in a cereal bowl or right out of the package like candy. And what a wholesome treat. Wheat for nourishment, sugar and honey coated on for flavor, plus quick energy. If you haven't tried Post Sugar Crisp yet, tell Mom to order it right away. That's Post Sugar Crisp, in regular or giant size red, white, and blue packages with the three little bears on the front. Roy and Dale have waited in the gunman's hangout for almost half an hour. Tense, alert, lest the outlaws in the next room decide to make trouble. Now they hear a signal being tapped on the outer door. They move through the dark hall, open the door. Back you, Ken. Come on in. It's dark in here. Man can't see a thing. Let's get this over with fast. Still laughing? Tom Hill and John Kennedy are here with the money they owe. The money they took from the dead man? Huh? It's not Ken. It's somebody else. Shut up. The curse Murray put on his gold. The curse is working. It's been working ever since we killed him. That's what we wanted to hear, Roy. It's Rogers, John. Come on, let's get out of here. Not so fast. That did it, Roy. You bet. Now to get them over to the sheriff's office and have them sign the confession they made. Here comes Jonah. Hey, Jonah. Huh? Did you send that key back to Lappin's place? Yes, sir, Roy. I sure did. You see, I sure did. He ought to have it by now and be letting old thick ears out of his cell. <laughs> you know, Roy, there's something I've been wondering about all this. Yeah. Now, Bullet always minds. He never disobeys. But today he did. He insisted on following your trail instead of the trail Johnny and Tom left. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten to Lappin's place until after Tom and Johnny did. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about that, too. Well, Roy, do you suppose... Oh, I don't believe in curses, but do you suppose that curse old Murray put on his money had anything to do with the way Bullet acted? I don't know. I don't believe in curses either, but... This is the first time Bullet ever disobeyed. Wait a minute. What's that you said, Roy? You don't believe in curses? Why, no, Jonah. Do you? Oh, you betcha. I say, you betcha. And I'll tell you why. Now, in this bean pod war I mentioned earlier, well, sir, <clears throat> one of the Saganapolis Islanders cursed Corporal Dumphy. Said bumps would raise up all over his skin and he'd lose his teeth before the sun set. Well? Oh, did he? <laughs> Dale, the fellow who said the curse had no more than got the words out of his mouth, then Corporal Dumphy walked straight into a hornet's nest. And the bumps riz up. See, they riz up. Hmm. You know, there's nothing like fighting a nest of stinging hornets to make bumps rise up on a man, I'll tell mm-hmm. you. But how about the teeth? You said the curse would... Yeah, well, well, he lost them, just like the prediction. He runs so fast to get away from the hornets, his teeth popped out of his back pocket. Out of his <laughs> back pocket? Oh, yes. You see, Corporal Dumphy was sort of stingy. He always carried his teeth in his pocket so they wouldn't wear out so fast. <laughs> Roy, what are we going to do about this fellow? Oh, uh, I don't know. I talked to the whale about Jonah a few days ago, and the whale absolutely refused to take him back. 
So I think I'll see what I can do with an old beat-up mackerel next time. Last night as I lay on the prairie And gazed at the stars in the sky I wondered if ever a cowboy Could drift to that sweet by and by That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on till Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Bill Green, Tim Graham, and Sam Edwards. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then Who cares about the clouds if we're together Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails to you Till we meet